Hammers up, everyone. Towley here. Today, we're going to be going over covenants, the best covenant abilities and signature abilities for tanks in Mythic Plus and Dungeons. Now, this isn't a Wonder Bar Golden Guardian style video where I'll be giving you all kinds of theory crafting and mathematics. So today's video, we're going to be going over protection paladins, and I'm going to rank them one through four on how I feel about them, my experience. Um, in the alpha and the beta so let's get started so first up divine toll kyrian ability now the divine toll ability is basically you instantly cast holy shock avenger shield or judgment on up to five targets within 30 yards now this is basically you're hitting two avenger shields hitting five targets back to back and it's a lot of shield of the righteous power generation it synergizes very well with uh, Avenger Shield Legendary and Shield of the Righteous Legendary. And right now I'm really feeling this as the kind of um, basic Mythic Plus overall uh, dungeon covenant ability I would use. Now you also have your class signature ability, which is the little Swoken. Now when you spawn the little Swoken, he does a bunch of stuff for you. But what he does the most though, is he gives you a little file of Serenity, which is a health pot basically but this health pot mixed with your soul binds actually does a lot more than you think so if you were to look at let's say the soul bind uh calculator on wowhead or, or if you just know them off the top of your head you probably don't if you haven't played the beta or the alpha like let's say pelagos right he has uh, a trait where it says the file of serenity heals you for 35 percent additional health but all of his healing is done over 10 seconds like that's pretty awesome you know, that, that that's just, you know, a little one. That's a, that's a small taste of it, right? Now, if you go to Clea, she has one that says, Follow Serenity renders you immune to curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects for 15 seconds. Now, you get three of these files, right? And you can summon this Swolken, I think, every five minutes. And then we have another one, which is my personal favorite, two of my personal favorites. One is Follow Serenity also knocks nearby enemies away from you, so when you hit the health pot, it'll knock them away or um when you're reduced below 35 percent health your file of serenity automatically heals you and consumes a charge you know the charges of, of the heal now that, this is really good because there's no cd on it so if you go above 35 percent health and below it'll charge it above and below it'll it'll heal you above and below it'll heal you so it's like a mini cooldown in case you're like soloing a boss at the end of some sort of like insane uh you know tyrannical or or fortified trash or whatnot that that file will save you so that's pretty much Kyrian, um in a nutshell okay and i i do like Kyrian. i think right now they're, they're so good uh for dungeons i mean the divine toll is on a one minute cooldown one minute you, it's basically up for pretty much every trash pack or at least every other trash pack and I think a lot of Paladins are really going to love it. And I think they're going to have a good time with it. Uh, unfortunately, and you might see this in a uh, later video of mine, they're not exactly the best for, let's say, you know, mythic rating. Unless you're fighting, unless you're in an encounter where you're, you know, going off against maybe like three or four or five enemies. Like just having that one Avenger shield is definitely not uh, pretty good, uh, I would say, right now at this point. So now we're gonna look at Necrolords. Now Necrolords is, uh, I wish it could be better because they do have a really cool um, covenant ability and it's called the Vanquisher's Hammer. Now this hammer throws a hammer at your target dealing shadow damage. It's about 80% of spell power and empowering your next uh, word of glory. So basically, uh, when you pop Word of Glory, it automatically triggers a Shield of the Righteous. Now, that's really good. You know, um, that's an extra SOTR. That's extra damage reduction. It's extra damage. Um, I wish the hammer would hit harder. It, it hits a little bit, uh, does a little bit less damage right now than your Hammer of the Righteous, like in, let's say a Mythic Plus 10. But there's really nothing to it that I believe would make it shine in a mythic plus environment maybe if you were fighting a tyrannical boss and let's say in some weird world they nerf the shit out of paladins and we can't keep up 100 percent of the uh, shield of the righteous uptime which we can right now then this is just a free sotr it is all it really is 
Uh, it's unfortunate, but this probably will be great for Mythic Raiding. Uh, that, once again, will be a different video. Now, the secondary ability, obviously, is called Fleshcraft. And uh, Fleshcraft, uh, in itself, is basically uh, an absorb uh, that you channel. And we can take a quick look at the uh, actual verbiage of it because I need to, I'm like doing this just as I'm you know, looking over the abilities online, talking you through the video while showing you the footage. Uh, so for Fleshcraft, and trust me, the you're going to like what it has for uh, the Soul Binds. Form a shield of flesh and bone over four seconds that absorbs damage equal to 20% of your maximum health for two minutes. Channeling near a corpse claims their essence to grow the shield up to 50% of your maximum health. This is most effective against powerful enemies. So if you just defeated a boss or if you just defeated uh, a huge trash pack, you know, you're going to get a bigger absorb shield. Right now, it is a, a cast. It's a four second cast. So using this in the middle of a fight is a no, no. It's unmitigated hits. You're going to get crushed pretty much as you're absorbing the shield. The shield just gets depleted anyway. Uh, if it didn't have a cast or if, the, if you can actually DPS through the cast, that would be great. Maybe don't know. But now if we, we were to look at the soul binds, right? They have some pretty gnarly soul binds. Now, this one's called volatile solvent, right? So using fleshcraft with nearby corpses derives a benefit from a corpse differing based on the creature type. So let's say you flesh craft next to an undead and a humanoid, right? You're going to get 2% mastery buff for six minutes, and you're also going to get 5% maximum health after you kill every enemy. That's an example. Now that persists even after your flesh craft absorb is depleted. So that's, that's actually pretty amazing for flesh craft. Um, there's a few more uh, that are pretty good. I, I, w I mean, uh, let's see. Fleshcraft renders you immune to crowd control. Uh, that, that one's called Ultimate Form. L looks like more of like a PvP one to me. Uh, there's another one where you get a shit ton of health, and it's actually really good. I'm, I, I'm looking for the exact name because I don't want to, like, misquote it or whatever. Uh, defeating an enemy reduces Fleshcraft's cooldown by one second. That would actually be pretty good in a Mythic Plus environment. Uh, and you will notice that sometimes these signature abilities for tanks um, can almost be as good as the main class ability. You know, because having Fleshcraft come up almost every other trash pack instead of, you know, every, you know, uh, you know, two minutes is, is pretty good. Um, and then there's also a, a pretty neato one where, uh, like, I'm trying to find it right now. I forgot what it was called. Help me out here, almighty. Oh, here we go. When you use your Necrolord class ability or spell, which is Vanquisher's Hammer, you gain a stack of uh, Emony's Magnificent, Magnificent Skin stacking up to four times. Using Fleshcraft consumes your skin to increase your maximum health by 5% per stack for two minutes. So pretty much you would use your Vanquisher's Hammer every 30 seconds, right? Four times. That'll give you four stacks of this. And then your next Fleshcraft, it's basically a 20% um, health increase based uh you know it increases your maximum health by 20 percent for two minutes and that is pretty awesome i mean I, I would say that wouldn't be too bad maybe in a dungeon like maybe you use it right before a boss and you just you just get like that nice little health stack right before a boss encounter so that's an example where like i believe necro lord covenant ability class signature ability it's probably better uh, like i think the flesh craft is better than the vanquisher's hammer and I wish it was the other way around, but it's not. Okay, here is oh man, Night Fay. Night Fay, I, I want I wanna love you so much, Night Fay. I, I wanna love you for dungeons. Cause I'm pretty much gonna end up going Night Fay for uh mythic rating if it stays the same. Now this is the one where you have to cycle through the blessings of the season, right? So there's four seasons, and every time you use one season. It puts you on a 30 second cooldown and after 30 seconds uh the buff itself is 30 seconds uh of whatever season you use and then it turns into another one so if you use let's say blessing of summer blessing of summer after 30 seconds can now turn into blessing of autumn and there's you can't control it it just goes in a, in a certain order so you're basically using each blessing blessing every like whatever two minutes but these blessings are pretty powerful uh let's read some off so we have the blessing of spring so uh, bless an ally for 30 seconds or yourself. So you can use this on other players. That's what makes this Night Fae so amazing for Paladins is you can use these abilities on other players. And if you have 
multiple paladins in your Mythic Plus dungeon, let's say you have like a, a prop paladin, holy paladin, ret paladin, you could just start spamming the blessings around, you spread the love, you know? So this first one increases healing done and healing received by 20%. And this is for 30 seconds, okay? And there's a 40 yard range. Now, after that cooldown is over, you can you can turn into Blessing of Summer. Now, this is the big hitter. This, I think, does the most single target damage uh, currently for prop paladins. Maybe maybe Ashen Hollow is comparable. I'm pretty sure Ashen Hollow is comparable for the burst uh, on this one. But um, bless an ally for 30 seconds, causing their attacks to have a high chance to deal 75% of your spell power as holy damage. Um, and that's the summer blessing. And you can also put that on somebody else. Like if you're a holy paladin, you can put the blessing of summer on your biggest damage dealer or your prop paladin. It scales very, it, the scaling is very wonky right now in alpha beta. So that, that that's going to be, you know, CBD, you know, of what happens in the future. So then we have blessing of autumn, uh, bless an ally for 30 seconds, causing their cooldowns to recover 50% faster. Blessing of Seasons then turns into Winter. Now, the cooldown reduction one, you can either use on yourself to do more damage and get your Shield of the Righteous stacks up higher, or as a prop paladin, you can give it to, like, your Mage or your Warlock or your Demon Hunter. And every two minutes, you can give a DPS to this cooldown. Uh, you can actually set this up uh, so that you can give it to uh, a certain DPS right before a boss pull. And then there's the Blessing of Winter, which is... Um, Attacks deal frost damage and reduces enemies' movement speed by 3% and attack speed by 1%, stacking 10 times. Uh, Blessing of Seasons then goes right back to the beginning. So these are four seasons that you rotate through. It sounds a lot complicated. You know, it, it's a little weird when you use them. But once you figure out, like, the, the strengths of them all and who to put them on uh, in a Mythic Plus dungeon, it can become very, very powerful. Um, the, the, the sucky part is... You might, if you want to get to a specific season by the start of a fight, you might have to, like, tell your group to wait a minute while you rotate through, you know, two seasons that are kind of useless. Like, let's say the frost damage one is not going to be that great at the beginning. So what I do when I tank on a prop paladin, I try to make sure that, you know, as we're about to approach a boss, I just start rotating through the seasons to the one that I want to use when the fight begins. And we've had some pretty cool Mythic Plus uh, situations where... We like I have given like uh, either a fire mage or a warlock the CD reduction right as lust pulls and they're just popping off or there'll be times where, you know, I think, you know, it would be better if I just do single target damage with a blessing of summer with uh, holy damage and then I do a, a shit ton of damage single target or there'll be other times and you can actually and you rotate these through the fight. You, you can use as many as you want as long as they keep they, they come off cooldown every 30 seconds. So that's night fey. Now for the night fey. Um, signature ability you do have uh the little the little uh, what do you call it the soul shape so you turn into like a little like night fey fox and you know your move speeds increase when you hit the button again you teleport forward now for soul binds and your signature ability you have little things like when soul bind ends you are concealed until you move uh defeating an enemy reduces soul shapes cooldown by three minutes uh let's see there's a few other ones here um, that are pretty decent. Uh, when Soul Shape ends, you increase the movement speed of nearby allies by 15% for 15 seconds. That's another one right there. Um, looking for more, looking for more. I, I, probably, I think there's always like three or four per Soul Bind. Let's see, Soul Shape increases the movement speed of allies within 40 yards by 10%. Uh, while out of combat, your Soul Shape's teleport becomes a charge, stunning your target for five seconds and ending your Soul Shape. So I think... I think I'm, th I'm pretty sure I used that one out of combat, but charged at a trash pack where I wanted to stun a crucial enemy uh, at the beginning of a trash pull. But all in all, signature ability is not that great. It's a bunch of movement speed and out of combat stuns and conceals um, for uh, for Night Fae. But for prop paladins, man, like the, the amount of utility, uh, personal DPS, like group dps group healing you can use with using the different summers excuse me, uh, different seasons is pretty awesome but at the same time uh you do have to rotate to the right one that you want to use and it will take two minutes to fully rotate to get to for, you know just if you start with one it'll take two minutes to get back to that one you started with so you just you just gonna have to figure out like who you want to use each blessing on as you rotate and then just do it by then usually most mythic plus dungeon bosses are dead now we have Venthyr. Oh, Venthyr. 
the talk of the town, huh? Every YouTuber out there talking about Door of Shadows. You need Door of Shadows. You have to use it for every dungeon. It's a mandatory ability. You have to pick it. But let's talk about the Prop Paladin ability first, huh? It's called Ashen Hollow. It's a four-minute cooldown. Uh, hollow the target area for 30 seconds. Every two, uh, every two seconds, an enemy in the area suffers 1,000% of your spell power as shadow damage, and an ally in the area is healed for 120% of spell power. Um, within the hollow, you may use Hammer of Wrath on any target. That is actually the cool part about this. So this is actually a single target ability when, 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 you boil down, when it boils down to it. You would think from watching this video, right? And you see me putting down Ashen Hollow. It's like a huge red AOE. And you're like, oh man, he must be doing tons of AOE damage. I'm actually not. I'm doing damage to one enemy. And I'm not even sure how it works. Um, if I'm pulling a, a boss with multiple adds, it might the, the damage for the single target might be going on an ad and not the boss. I hope it's a target that I'm targeting. I've tried to test it and it's really wonky and funky, but being able to use uh, Hammer of Wrath on any target for 30 seconds, um, which you, you'll probably get about, I think four Hammer of Wraths in, in, in that sequence, um, is pretty good. Uh, it's a good DP, it's literally a DPS, um, single target DPS uh, covenant ability, in my opinion. I remember when I first used it, I was such a newbie. I was like, oh, yeah, this is fucking hitting everything. And, and, and yeah, this is this is awesome, man. I'm doing so much AOE damage. And I just realized, nah, man, I'm doing single target damage and I'm single target healing myself. Um, uh, I mean, big downer, though, four minute cooldown. So instead of using this lovely, huge AOE ability on trash, you're pretty much saving it for bosses uh, or you have to really know your timers in a Mythic Plus dungeon and say, OK, you know, I can use this right now, and we should be able to hit the boss in about three minutes and 40 seconds, and it'll be up for the boss fight, et cetera, et cetera. You don't want to have this down for any kind of boss fight in the Mythic Plus, because it, it's going to pump on Tyrannical if they keep the damage the way it is. Uh, on most uh, Warcraft logs, even details, whatever, Ashen Hollow single targets, like 30, 40% of my damage. It's almost like you have a Twilight Devastation version of, um, you know, of a Shadowlands ability. Now, Door of Shadows, the signature ability for Venthyr. One charge, one minute recharge, wend through the shadows, appearing at the targeted location. Now, the range is like 35 yards. So it's basically a teleport with a 1.5 second cast where you teleport 35 yards in any direction. And you can teleport across bridges. Uh, you can teleport just like, you know, it's like a warlock gate. Pretty much so all the little tricks that you would be using in Freehold to skip the bridges and get up to Harlan at the end and all this other shit. You'd be using Door of Shadows for it. Now, when it comes to soul binds, there's a lot of overpowered um, Door of Shadows soul bind abilities that affect the signature ability. Some have already been nerfed. So we have uh, things such as Agent of Chaos, Door of Shadows, disorients all nearby enemies at the target location for six seconds when you appear. That's pretty huge. I can imagine. I mean, that in Battlegrounds is going to be a goddamn troll. You know, imagine having like four goddamn people door shadowing a group of uh, players across the, you know, the, the field in either like Ultrag Valley or Warsong Gold or Twin Peaks or whatever. It's called Twin Peaks, right? Anyway, another one is Door of Shadows increases your movement speed by 40% decaying over six seconds. Um, let's see if we can find some more beneficial ones here. Uh, Door of Shadows frees you from roots and snares. Door of Shadows has two charges, but its cooldown is increased by 30 seconds. So you could do it twice, but it's a minute and a half uh, cooldown. That's that's still goddamn overpowered, if you ask me. There's still so many <laughs> that are just completely broken. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, uh, do we have another one? I think there's one more. I'm pretty sure I missed it. I, know there's, I think there's one where you... Um, Teleport forward and you gain a shield or something? Where is it? It's around. There we go. Enduring Gloom. Door of Shadows grants you a shield that absorbs damage equal to 15% of your maximum health lasts eight seconds. So, yeah. You know? Um, and there's also a lot of um, soulbind traits that, sh that really mesh with your current covenant ability as well. Like, you have one... 
uh, from General Draven in uh, Venthyr for your Ashen Hollow, right? It says, act when uh, activating your Venthyr class ability grants 10% versatility to you and 4% verse to up to four al uh, nearby allies last 10 seconds. It's like it's kind of like that uh, the trinket from uh, Toll Dagger, Toll Dagger as I call it, uh, you know, Jez Howler or whatnot. So that that's pretty much everything for Prop Paladin for Covenant abilities and signature abilities. Now I'm giving you the raw rankings here, Tally's personal raw rankings. Now, if I was thinking about, I'm I only do Mythic Plus dungeons. I'm pushing keys. I'm playing with my friends on a weekend. We're doing 15s, trying to push 17s, going 18s, or. You know, I'm just starting to play the the expansion. I'm a little bit late, and I want to pick a covenant, and I want to do some dungeons. I want to get some gear. I want to do some fives and sixes and sevens. Here is Towley's rankings um, overall for for Mythic Plus. Number one, and I'm gonna just say I'm gonna go one to four because we're not gonna do that whole you know drum roll and get to whatever. So Kyrian, Kyrian Covenant, I would say is number one. I think having Divine Toll on a one minute cooldown, uh, an extra Avenger shield. That's just a lot, that's a lot more damage. That's more absorbs. That's more shield of the righteous. It's just overall great. Your Swolken really, really helps you out with a lot of their soul bind abilities, especially the ones that removes all curses, bleeds, and uh, whatever magic effects. And the other one that heals you uh, below 35% health with no internal cooldown. Those are pretty powerful uh, currently right now. I think any Paladin tank who is thinking about only pushing Mythic Plus and doing dungeons is probably thinking Divine Toll is, is their is their main jam. I like it. it. It would be my favorite. Unfortunately, I won't be choosing it because of being a Mythic Raider. It, it's just not viable. But number one, Divine Toll. Now, number two for me would have to be... I wish I had an actual drum roll thing, but I don't have one. Um, will have to be uh, Night Fae. I love Night Fae for Mythic Plus. Um, it doesn't do as much like AoE damage, but the sheer utility of it all um, makes you a pretty uh, powerful uh, prop paladin tank in Mythic Plus dungeons. Uh, I can imagine like on a on a huge push uh, week, you want to do a tyrannical like I don't know plus nineteen twenty. You know you can use these major cooldowns like your blessing of uh of autumn where i'm just like giving my fire mage or i'm giving my demon hunter or my wind walker just you know 50 percent faster recovery on cooldowns or you know we're in a tight situation boss is about to hit pretty hard i can give myself the 20 percent uh more healing done and healing received you know, uh, I need to push my damage a little better. I can use Blessing of Summer. It does literally like 15 to 20 percent of your damage, single target. Uh, any boss, uh, any boss or, or trash with ads, you have the Blessing of Winter with the frost damage and 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 you know r movement reduction speed. You know, and then with the Night Fae, um, uh, how do we say signature abilities? They're not that powerful. Soul shaping is really bad for dungeons. I don't see how as a tank I would be able to utilize it as much. Maybe besides the stun. But yeah, uh, personally, I would go with Night Fae uh, number two because that would that that for me the number two for prop paladin would be the best balance in my opinion between Mythic Plus and probably uh, something like um, you know Mythic rating. Th that's where I will I would find my balance and nothing changes today. Number three. All right. We have two. Now we're down to two. We're down to two here. I know you guys are going to want me to say Venthyr, right? Ah, oh, Tally, Door of Shadows, Teleport Everywhere. Every YouTuber is like, it's a mandatory pick. It's fucking not a mandatory pick. I've done every dungeon so far. All eight dungeons, the max level, the low level, and it's just not it. So with number three, I am actually going with Necrolord ability, Vanquisher's Hammer. It does a good amount of damage, just a little bit below um, Hammer of Wrath. Fleshcraft is actually very good in between pulls for a two second cast. You have lots of really, really good um, soul bind uh, class signature uh, traits that would really help you with increased maximum health. It will help you with getting different buffs from killing different kind of mobs in different dungeons. And uh, overall, it just adds to your healing uh, in general. 
and having that extra shield of the righteous um available to you in a tight situation with vanquisher's hammer on tyrannical or any kind of nasty trash is always a plus and that would be my number three and then number four <laughs> contrary to popular belief and you know very outspoken people out there i will put venthyr in last benefits of the ashen hollow best single target damage but that's all it really does single target damage and healing four minute cooldown just because it, i mean based on the fact that it's a four minute cooldown makes it the weakest to me four minutes is way too long being able to hit hammer of wrath in that ashen hollow for 30 seconds pretty good you get three to four hammers in there fine no problem but other than that, I mean, you're basically taking such a beautiful AOE looking ability, using it for single target and not even using it on trash while everyone else in your group is, you know, balling out using their 30 second, one minute, two minute cooldowns, you know? So you literally have to hold on to these abilities uh, either per boss or, you know, per ma big major trash pack and hope that the damn damage hits the trash pack that's going to hurt you the most, which we don't know how that works. And the Door of Shadows, having done the dungeons, I don't see many situations where Door of Shadows is gonna uh, help you skip a lot or anything like that. You still got rogues to conceal. You still got invis pots. Um, I think I've found maybe, I've seen videos of the top MDI dudes finding a couple of places here and there. Door of Shadows seems to be definitely a huge um, PVP thing right now. Not so much in Mythic Plus as ha it has been advertised. Does it need a nerf? Absolutely. You could definitely use it to like get out of, uh, get out of the way of major abilities. Uh, create distance uh, with a boss while you're tanking in case you're about to die or the group is about to die. Um, or if you have to stack in a certain place for an AOE ability, you can also do that. Or if you have the LOS somewhere, you can do that. You could time it. it. It does have its perks, but just not enough for me to care. So there you have it, man. There you have it. Kyrian, Divine Toll, Night Fae, Blessings of the Seasons, or Blessing of Seasons. Uh, Vanquisher's Hammer from Maldraxxus and the Necrolords, and then last but not least, Ashen Hollow um, with the uh, Venthyr Revendreth uh, Covenant ability. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, I made this video, and I, want, I wanted to make it because I want people, people to know what my thought process is in, uh, when I'm going to be going into this expansion on what I'm going to be using when it comes to Mythic Plus. Now, obviously, all this is subject to change. But right now, man, Kyrian stuff is cool. And like I said, what makes the Divine Toll on its own OP, besides the damage and the, you know, the amount of threat it generates and the amount of uh, play, uh, enemies it hits, is just that Swolken, man. That Swolken is so good. And it's going to be good. It's going to be great. I think people are going to find out just how overpowered some of these signature abilities are for tanks. So once again, this is a Prop Paladin, uh, which are the best Covenant abilities and signature abilities. Uh, rundown. Next video, we're going to be going over Death Knights. Let me know what you think. Uh, hit the, you know, the, uh, what is this, the uh, subscribe button. Yeah, like, and uh, yeah, see you at the next video. Man, it's a shame Uther went blue. God damn it, man. <laughs>